event. It's a launch of a book which is a great deal to do with images, but I'm sorry that the images have not arrived. It doesn't matter because I think we'll keep you entertained without the images. Um, it's a privilege really uh, to be in the company of the people who actually have contributed so much uh, to the book. First of all, the person responsible for the book, who is um, Dr. Furkan Ahmed, sitting next to me. He's one of the country's leading gastroenterologists. But that's not the reason why we are talking to him today. We're talking to him because he is one of the foremost collectors of modern and contemporary art, primarily contemporary art in Pakistan. And his collection, which is known as the Furkan Ahmed Collection, it's a significant collection of contemporary Pakistani art. And it encompasses more than 1,000 works. And it is in a wide range of media. It includes ceramics and paintings, works on paper, sculpture, prints, photography, and new media art. And um, this collection is lent to galleries, it's lent to biennales, it's lent to museums, both inside and outside Pakistan. And this collection is supported by a very large reference library. And uh, now it started publishing books itself. And that is the reason why we are talking about one particular publication. And the idea is to actually publicly document the works that they are and also to invite critical discourse around the books and the collections. Um, and we have with us one of those people who's going to be involved in that political discourse. That's Dr. Ali Raza, who's an associate professor of history at LAMS in Lahore. And he received his DPhil from Oxford University in South Asian history. His research and teaching interests include the social and intellectual history of South Asia and comparative colonialism, decolonization, and post-colonial theory. And he's author of a book, uh, there's another one coming along, but that's another story, Revolutionary Pass, Communi in Communist Internationalism in Colonial India, and it's put out by the Cambridge University Press and Folio Books Pakistan in 2021. And um, I will talk about his contribution to the book later. So what is this book, Finding Jinnah? And why am I, as in Salima Hashmi, as an artist, educator, and curator, talking about this book? It's a book which is unusual. You know, the Chinese curse goes, may you live in interesting times. And, uh, but it's the interesting times that throw up interesting books. And therefore, you have this book, which is ostensibly should be about what the, the title is, Finding Jinnah. But it is about actually how artists look at Jinnah. Because it is a collection of contemporary art based on portraits of Jinnah or understandings of Jinnah, uh, that young contemporary artists, with the exception of one artist, um, have put together. And our collector, Dr. Furkan Ahmed, has been judiciously and I think provocatively collecting works done by young artists which are about Jinnah. Um, I think he has instigated many of them. Uh, because some of them were commissioned, I believe. Um, and therefore, when you look at these uh, images, you really, um, you realize that how do young artists look at Jinnah? Um, is he as mysterious as they think he is? And um, I, like to, um, I like to quote Aisha Jalal over here. Uh, you know, her book, of course, the well-known one, Soul's Spokesman. But she said, you know, somewhere that there is too much made of the history that Jinnah made and too little of the context that made Jinnah. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on also. 
But for right now, I'd really like to ask Dr. Furkan. You know, collectors, one usually thinks of collectors as people who walk into galleries, they like something, it strikes them, and um, they pay the price, walk off with it, and they're the owners of that piece of work. For a person who's professionally a doctor, a medical doctor, to turn to this, that in itself is a little bit of a surprise, though not unusual, really. But um, firstly, you are a well-known collector, you have collected. Why this? Why did you set out to think about Jinnah as something that could be connected to art making and eventually to your collection? inviting me to participate here today. So this book is the result of the intersection of two obsessions of mine, a Jinnah obsession and a contemporary art obsession. So I think I've always been fascinated by Jinnah, um, and maybe not so much as him as everybody's response to him since I was a child. At home you would hear one set of stories about Jinnah and who he was and what he wanted at the dinner table, but as you would make yourself, make your way through the world, you would see that there are lots of other versions of what Jinnah is, so was supposed to be based on public pronouncements, based on what you see on TV. And there's a big dichotomy there. So for some reason, that's always been in my mind as to why that may be and what that means for us as a country. Because if we can't agree on something as simple and as basic as that, then I mean, what chance do we have moving forward in a unified way if we can't agree on basic things? So I think uh, subconsciously, this has been in my mind. And as I was buying art works relating to Jinnah would often fascinate me and I would end up buying them. And after a while, I realized that actually there are quite a few of these. And I think together they say more as a group than they do perhaps individually. And it would be interesting to explore what, all they, what they mean together and have people look at that and think about that and historians and to tell us more about what this whole means. Um, it's interesting that you know that you chance about that. Yes, there's a lot of talk on Jinnah. We remember him every 25th of December, which is supposed to be his birthday though we know really that it's not. Um, and then of course on the 14th of August and perhaps 23rd of March. And that's just about it. Um, and I'm just wondering that, you know, how you came about this desire. As you say, it's a person who we think we know. Um, we hear the stories. There is, we know that he was a very well-dressed, urbane man but he was also remote, which is why we don't know so much about him. And then um, one wonders how you got into the idea of getting artists to be curious about Jinnah. I mean, what, what was your, what was the story? What was your spiel? <laughs> so actually, I think there are only two commissioned works in the project and those were iterations of works those artists had previously done. I did not want to have artists say that I didn't want to go to them and say, please make something about Jinnah. Most of these works came out of their organic artistic practices. And I thought that was more interesting that why were they choosing to make art about Jinnah? Because what does that say about them and about us? So that I think it was more about what came out of their own minds and their own artistic practices than anything that I laid upon them to reflect back to me. That's, in, that's very curious. Do you think that uh, the news went round that Dr. Furkan is looking for Jinnah? Do you think that might have persuaded certain artists to perhaps think about Jinnah? So I'm going to say initially no, because I bought these works over, let's say, a dozen years. So it wasn't like I was going everywhere looking, asking for Jinnah. Mm -hmm. But since the book has come out, yes, I think there's been a, a spurt of Jinnah works in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole new um, school, I think, possibly, <laughs> looking at. I think this is, this is interesting because it points out to you the various factors that may lead to work being done in a particular way or in a particular direction uh, by young artists. But of course, we know that about um, Jinnah is, in a way, everywhere. He's on the coins, he's in the currency, every kind of transaction that happens here somehow has his stamp. Um, and yet, um, 
there is a kind of, a, yet there's a kind of depersonalization also. You don't know who this symbol is. He's a mystery. Um, he's an icon, but what lies behind the icon? How many people actually uh, bother to investigate it? What are the perceptions of Jinnah? What are the, what, what are the desires that you might have when you acquire a work which is supposed to be about Jinnah? When you started acquiring these works, did any of those desires, did any of those inclinations, did any of those hopes or curiosities that you had, did they start appearing? Did it start becoming like a tapestry that you were wanting? Did you know you were wanting this? So when this began, I didn't, I had no, obviously no idea. Um, so it's also not to say that whenever anybody would show me a shiny object with a gin on it, I would be okay, I'll buy it. <laughs> I mean, there had, there had to be some thought process in it, and I like to discuss the work with the artist to see what they wanted to say or what they're trying to say with the work. Mm -hmm. So I think, and then together, obviously, all these conversations came up into with a much larger, interesting picture mm -hmm. that was not how this was started out to be. Because in spite of what we think, there is an invisibility about Jinnah. It, he is not really a visible person in spite of his face and his demeanor all being there. So which makes one wonder as to whether it is in fact the artist or the writer or the poet or some kind of investigator who should actually be given this task of making Jinnah visible. And looking through this book, that is one of the things that happens. That in a very strange way, Jinnah starts becoming visible. And after I'd been through the, the images, I thought only artists could do that. Um, I don't think anybody else could have done. So I want to ask you now, Ali, the title of the essay that you have given to contributed to this book, is um, will the real Mr. Jinnah please stand up? And firstly, a little bit about this title, and then, you know, your investigations, and what was it that you were trying to put, um, you know, put together for your contribution to this particular book? Um, well, thank you uh, very much, Professor Salima Hashmi, for uh, organizing this, and indeed, Dr. Furkan, for putting this together. Um, I have to say that Dr. Furkan was a bit uh, measured and modest in his responses because um, this is a fabulous book. Uh, it really is. Um, and um, I, I remember receiving an email um, saying that, hey, would you be interested in writing an essay for this? And I was, I just like, you know, scrolled through those images spellbound um, because it told so much, told, told much larger stories about uh, both our historical imagination of Jinnah or, or, and indeed, uh, what we would like uh, Jinnah to be in our imagination. So, uh, so congratulations again on this fantastic uh, book. Um, the title, um, it's a riff on a song that I grew up with, <laughs> basically, by Eminem. Mary generation but I but I but I thought that the title uh, "Will the Real Mr. Jinnah Please Stand Up" uh, was perhaps faithful uh, both to um, the man and the myth of the man. Uh, both in his time and our time. Uh, and so my essay starts off uh, with a story of a young person, uh, Rafiq Naam Thaunka, but Rafiq Muzangvi Naam Tha, and Muzangke Thay, Muzangke Raishi Thay, and one day they had to say that they had to kill Jinnah Sahib. And this is the story of 1942. So they were going to go to Lahore from Delhi to the train, and they didn't have to kill the ticket, they didn't have to kill the ticket, so why did they kill the ticket? और जब दिल्ली पहुंचे और वहां पे जो मुस्लिम लीग का वहां पे जो एचक्यू था वहां पे जना साहब को वो मिले और उन्होंने कोशिश की कुछ था तो नहीं उनके पास एक छोटी सी उनके पास छुरी थी और वो नाकाम हो गई एंड यहां से मैं वाकया शुरू करता हूं और उसकी और उसकी बुनियादी एक तरह से बात यह है कि जना साहब ऑब्वियसली ड्यूरिंग हिज लाइफ टाइम एंड स्पेशली एज अ मूवमेंट फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान यू नो गैदर्ड स्टीम हैड 
a number of opponents. And uh, Rafiq Muzangbi uh, was someone who was affiliated with a party known as the Khaksar Tahrik. Uh, the Khaksar Tahrik was profoundly opposed uh, to the Muslim League and to Jinnah Sahab. Unke nazari ke mutabik, ye jo the Muslimanu ki sahi numain ki nahi karete. Or bhi aap di kar jante hain mukhalifin the us waqt ke jo ke Jinnah Sahab ko nahi Muslimanu ka hakiki numain da na wo, balke Jinnah Sahab ko hakiki Muslimanu bhi samajte the. और उनके एक तरह से जो सियासी जानशीन है आज भी जो है सियासी तौर पे सरगरम है सो सो माय पॉइंट वाज टू से दैट दिस इज अ मैन हु इन हिज ओन लाइफ हैज अ नंबर ऑफ गाइजेस ही हैज अ नंबर ऑफ मिथ्स एंड इमेजेस एसोसिएटेड विद हिम आइदर टू डू विद हिज रिलीजियस आइदर टू डू विद हिज रिलीजियस पर्सोना um और हिज पॉलिटिक्स एंड दैट ऑब्वियसली व्हाट पीपल मेड ऑफ हिम वाज आल्सो द सोर्स ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इन हिज ओन टाइम uh and so one you know looks at various uh, you know sources and you look at various archives and you look at various documentations uh and a very different image of the man comes out um which obviously is a very interesting image especially when you uh, juxtapose that with the many biographies that have been written on the man i'm thinking of stanley wolpert uh i'm thinking of abhi jo yasir ali hamdani sahab ki kitab aayi hai aur deegar beshumar aise biographies hain uh, so there are very interesting kind of like contrasts uh in terms of the emphasis that is placed on the man um and that obviously brings to uh, brings me to our present kind of anxieties about this figure and who this figure really is uh, aur yahan pe bhi ek bade maze ki as a historian what's interesting to me is again to look at uh, the many different depictions of jena uh that we find in our present there is the jinnah obviously um of the august 11th speech jo wo har bar har saal 14 august ke waqt unhi alfaz ko bar bar dohraya jata hai aur kuch sar kuch kehna cha rahi thi aap is bare mein so to wo 11 august ki wo jo constitutive assembly ki speech thi jinnah sahab ki wo bar bar dohraya jati hai har yom e azadi pe yakinan is 75vi यौम आज़ादी पर भी वो दोहराई जाएगी और वो एक मखसूस एक तरह से एक सियासी सोच की नुमाइंदगी करती है उसकी अक्सी करती है मगर साथ साथ आपको और भी आपको जना साहब की आपको तकरीर उनके 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 इर्शादात उनके ख्याल आपको दीगर हल्कों से आपको मिलेंगे विच अगेन रिप्रजेंट अ वेरी डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स सो देर इज़ अ वेरी यू नो विजिबल काइंड ऑफ यू नो एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ द मैनी डिफरेंट क्लेम्स दैट वेरियस पोलिटिकल ओपिनियंस इन पाकिस्तान हैव ऑन जना and so it's difficult to piece apart um standing from the outside uh who the real mr jinnah really is and what interested me actually about this book um and the many um uh, you know artistic expressions or imaginations around jinnah is that what it told me is that uh is that the claim to jinnah or whoever he is uh is also open it's open ended and that to me uh is something to actually celebrate um and to and to cherish and i said this because uh, furqan sahab ne badi ek umda baat ki thi because uh, growing up too uh, you know uh, the first thing you learn in school especially is that uh, there has to be some kind of consensus there has to be agreement there has to be unity uh, on all these things that actually make us into a society a nation and so on uh, but i think sometimes that we tend to devalue difference and actually different points of view uh and i think those are to be cherished those are to be celebrated and those are to be protected in some ways because uh, our imagination of these figures and the figures of the past obviously but our imagination of these figures is always colored by what we see in our present and so we read into those figures back into the past what we understand to be the crisis of our present uh and i think in that sense uh any image that comes uh, that that we present of the past has those reflections that that we that we think that 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 again come to us from a present and of course where we would, where we would like to be in the future and so in that sense i think uh, those many different depictions of jena actually actually are an exercise in democratic um kind of like you know opinion making in democratic discussion in debate uh and indeed disagreement and i think that uh, you know is mulki bahut hi ek 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 takleef de tareekh rahi hai of enforced kind of uh, uniformity of enforced uh, hegemony of enforced uh, like monolithic politics uh, humne ek aadha mulk uh, ek apna aadha hissa gawaya bhi is chakkar mein uh, and i think that uh, ye jo khauf jo hame hota hai uh, of like disagreement of different points of view uh, is khauf se mere khas se peeche hatne ki zarurat hai and i think jis tarah se jitna hum isko ek tarah se kushada uh, kalbi ke sath hum isko hum is hum is 
تمام تر جو, جو, جو طرح سے مسئلے ہیں ان کو ڈسکس کریں گے آ, تو بطور ایک معاشرے کے بطور ایک ملک کے ہمارے لیے بہتر ہوگا اینڈ تھنک دیٹ دس اگین یو نو گوسٹ ہارٹ آف دا مینی ڈفرینٹ ایکسپریشن دیٹ پیپل ہیو پرزینٹیڈ آف جینا بیکاز دس از واٹ دے آلسو سی اینڈ ہوپ فار پاکستانس فیوچر اینڈ واٹ دے کنسڈر پاکستان ٹو بی Uh, and I think in that sense, uh, you know, this is a fantastic book. And the last thing I'll say, I, I know I'm sorry, I'm kafi lamba bol raho, but akhri chit mein ye bolunga ke, you know, Jinnah is not unique. Um, founding fathers, and they are, uh, you know, usually fathers. Um, I, yeah, literally all of them are fathers. Ye kalak, ye kalak us mein hum ja sakte hain behas mein. But founding fathers, uh, regardless of where you look, uh, they have a contested le- legacy um, in, in, in our present. Uh, you can look, for example, at the contested legacy of the founding fathers of the, of the United States, especially after the Black Lives Matter movement, in which those very same celebrated figures like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, uh, they are now understood also as, which they were, as slave owners. Uh, and so that obviously represents, represents a very different view, uh, not just of the past and how we understand those figures, but also uh, it, it represents a, an expression, a desire for a different kind of future which is to say, what kind of a nation state do we want to be? Uh, and that requires, again, revisiting the past, thinking about what we consider to be the founding figures, and of course, uh, their, their received images as we have received them uh, in our present. And so all of that is to say uh, that this is very much part and parcel of how founding fathers, founding figures, founding fathers are, are represented, are understood, and indeed are represented as basically figures who can then kind of like, you know, open up the way, imaginatively at least, as we understand them, for a different future in Pakistan. And I think I'll end with that. Thank you. Brings us back to actually, as you said, the diversity of images. And it makes you think about how we treat Mr. Jinnah. Um, very interesting things like in some of the, the works that the artists are, he's just like wallpaper. There's the wallpaper and you are just ignoring the images in the wallpaper while you do some really dirty business, you know. Um, and does then that image of Jinnah give sanctity to that very nefarious activity that is going on in his name? I sometimes think about that uh, when I look at the public portraits that are in very important places in Pakistan. And you just wonder as to, does he actually sanction all those things that are happening in his name? I think one of the the things that comes out in the, the images that artists have worked on is that they're critiquing the idea of the founding father being a wallpaper. And they want to fill in all those little nooks and crannies which make up a man and trying to figure out what it was. And there's a great deal of humor also, which is there. And I think that that is um, a signifier of how lively the imagination is, which is taking up this issue. Um, I'm sure that um, Dr. Dr. Saab, Dr. Kurgan Saab, you must have had quite a few surprises in the way that artists have actually looked at Jinnah. Did you find any of them disturbing? Did any of them shock you? Uh, Were you amused? What were your various responses to what artists have been doing with Jinnah? So I think there were a few that were amusing and a couple that were disturbing. (laughs) But I think that the the study of Jinnah through art is long overdue. This has been done for other leaders. In the US, there are Indian origin academics who have built their entire careers on studying Gandhi in art. That's Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And so this is like really, you know, we're we're way behind in some of these things. So this is long overdue to start thinking about you know, what, what his depiction in art says about him, what it says about us, because it mm-hmm. says probably more about us than it does about him, of course. Yeah. poor guy. Mm-hmm. It says actually a lot about us. Yeah. It is a lot about us, and which is why you enjoy the various ways in which the artists have used Jinnah 
to talk not about Jinnah, but to talk about us. And that is actually, so then Jinnah becomes an aid to the artist's investigation and to the artist's research into building, firstly, the individual narrative that the artist is building, but also, obviously, I mean, these are works in your collection, but the artist is also addressing an audience. And by publishing it in your book, you've actually allowed the artist to speak out to an audience, which otherwise when works go into a private collection, that's where they remain They're and gone. You know, nobody knows what is there. In this case, the communication between the artist and the audience was absolutely critical because I think that that discourse, which I think now when more and more people hopefully acquire the book or at least are get it from libraries to look at, um, you can think again about your own process of dealing with icons, of dealing with public figures, of looking at the sacred cows that we dare not Absolutely. investigate. And you know, this is something that you're talking about, Ali. Um, what about what the essays said? And we've talked about the images. Were you worried about how the essays, how the essays would be received? Yeah. I was, actually there were people who were more nervous than I was about doing a project like this <laughs> because this is inherently incredibly controversial. I mean, it's not, but in, in anything with Jenna is inherently controversial. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I thought, then, and I did have a, a word with all of the essay writers who I asked to contribute, to say that, you know, where the purpose is not to throw bombs, <laughs> the purpose is to say what you feel, but in a respectful way. Uh -huh. And I think everybody did that for a fabulous day. Yeah. However, when reading um, the book, sometimes there are places where you wonder how um, it would be taken by audiences that are not terribly interested in art. What do you think, Ali? Were you aware of um, hot spots uh, in the book? Very much so, because uh, there is obviously uh, this image of Jinnah that, that we find in our currency notes, mm -hmm. which obviously represents a very brief moment in his life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't represent you know, who he was as a person for much of his life. So. Uh, one obviously is very conscious of that. Um, and then of course, uh, there are uh, those other varying opinions that existed in Jinnah Sahab's time, which is to say that there were, uh, and I think we forget that uh, many a time, which is to say uh, that there were Muslim organizations and Muslim politicians who were also opposed uh, to Jinnah Sahab and its politics. Um, you know, we can, like I said, Khak Sar Tahrik, Ek Dubainda Jamaat hai unki, aur Diga Jamaat hai bhi us tarah ki. And I think sometimes, uh, jo hamari nisabi kitabon mein jo hum padhte hain, wo ye padhte hain ki ji ke, um, ek uh, mukammal taur par ek support unko thi, uh, ek, ek, ek Hindustani Muslimano ki taraf se. Aur mere khayal se, again, <laughs> isme koi controversy ki baat nahi hai, ki agar aap jo hain, thodi si, agar ishare karayum, agar baat kar sakein, uh, ke aur bhi nukta hai, uh, nazar hai, us, us, us ke, aur bhi ka ek alag ek, uska, unka ek view tha ki kis tarah se uh, ye muslimano ke hukuk ko uh, unki na sirf hifazat ho sakti hai, magar unko ek tarah se ujagar kiya sakta hai. Um, to uh, maine apne aise mein kam as kam unki taraf nishan dehi karne ki koshish ki thi. In the sense that, uh, look, this is a very contested uh, political sphere within the Muslim, kind of like within the sphere of Hindustani Muslims. Uh, and there are a number of viewpoints. And I think that, uh, and I think that we can also learn um, in our moment uh, from that opposition as well. Uh, because what they also tell us is that there were a number of visions that were associated with freedom, with decolonization, and in a way that question for freedom still remains relevant for us today. Because the question of freedom cannot simply be exhausted by thinking about a change in flags, but thinking about a change in uniforms, but thinking about a change in faces. Uh, and I think the kind of viewpoints you find at that time when Jinnah Sahib was operating uh, tell us, much like Fayez Sahib also told us, that this is not that that we continue to think about, uh, you know, what does it really mean to be free? Mm -hmm. And whether 
we have in some ways fully explored the question of what it means to be free and I think that for that reason we have to turn back to our past uh, and to look at all those various visions that were associated with freedom including obviously that of Jena Saab and the Muslim League and of course that of his opponents and I think that can be done in a perfectly respectful way without being controversial at all, <laughs> without <laughs> ruffling any feathers. Like I said, <laughs> that's what makes for a healthy society and a healthy uh, you know, polity as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and the task of a historian uh, to that end is to chart in some ways all those different opinions and viewpoints that were associated with freedom. One of the things that um, we have noticed, and I think artists probably more than anybody else, that um, the favorites portraits of Jinnah have altered in our history. And uh, for example, during Zia al Haq's period, Jinnah Saab was inevitably in a Sherwani and with a very starched shalwar and with the Jinnah cap. You never, all the representations of Jinnah Saab in the suit totally disappeared. They were nowhere in either the media. Uh, the funny thing is, of course, that you know, in the portrait in the National Gallery, he was very much wearing a suit. Yeah. So the artist was asked, very well known colleague of mine was asked to alter that and he refused. And so another artist was told to come and paint on top of that and as they said, Jinnah Saab ko musalman bana diya. So there was this huge controversy in the art world at the time that how the changing of an image is really brought to the fore to make it coincide with um, the requirements of the state. I think that one of the most wonderful portraits of Jinnah was this really playful painting, which has not been seen, which was made by Colin David mm -hmm. of um, Mr. Jinnah playing billiards. Mm. And uh, it was first exhibited at the National College of Arts. And um, it was really a, a very lively and you know wonderful painting. And because Colin David was a very um, fine portrait painter, uh, it really rang true. You know. um, but it seemed to have disappeared from public view and public discourse. I don't even know where the painting is now must be in some collection. Um, but I think that that is also something that the power of images Absolutely. to tell a narrative, official or otherwise. Um, and just as I, I open to, we just have about six or seven or eight minutes for um, questions or comments. Um, just like to end with the, that art is a social as well as a deeply investigative journey, journey. And it embodies a desire to share with the audience um, the need to probe and to um, worry, you know, whatever it is, the circumstances in which we live. Artists, writers, poets take that risk. And we need the audiences to be strong enough to respond and to be our companions in that probing and in that investigation. So um, firstly, anyone you want to say last word, if there are any questions or any comments, I just want to say a big kudo to Dr. Furkan for really for <laughs> making this. <laughs> and I especially want to say that the cover itself Stunning is really wonderful because this is, you know, this is all, it's, it has a texture. So, you know, so finding Jinnah, contemporary art from Pakistan. And the feeling that you get on that is almost like you're, you found Jinnah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> when you touch it. <laughs> so, uh, anybody who'd like to comment or to uh, ask a question, or, you're very welcome. Can I say one last thing yes, while we're waiting do. for questions? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I was struck by all the artworks is their diversity. Mm -hmm. And there's the media, there's very media, there's photography, there's ceramics, there's video, there's painting. And the ideas the artists have are just as diverse. Mm -hmm. And part of it is, so one of the problems is that people fear complexity. Mm -hmm. 
And I think we need to be willing to embrace Jinnah and all his complexity. And he was a human. He had flaws. He was not perfect. He was not a saint. And presenting him as a two-dimensional character to us is just a great disservice to us. Yeah. So this book is about embracing the complexity of Jinnah and of our own history, because our history is very messy. Yeah. We should embrace all of it. Okay. Yes, no doubt. <laughs> Ali, you would like to have a last word? No, I, I think uh, Dr. Fakan summed it up perfectly well, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could not agree more. Yes, yeah. yes, Omar. Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, yeah. So, I, I'm not sure if I should say, but I think I do have a favorite. It's, an it's a painting by Az Joe Kyo of the back of Jinnah. It's, it's, a, it's a back portrait, yeah. which I think one can interpret in so many ways, either that he's turned his back to us after what we've done to him. <laughs> well, the way I read that painting, it's hard to say this without having an image of it, unfortunately. But it basically shows the back of Jinnah. Mm -hmm. So I think in the years leading up to partition, Jinnah was trying to get all the diverse Muslim groups, and we were not unified, we were as fractured as we are today, trying to get them all on one platform for Pakistan. And he did that by, prom by showing them the promised land, which was in front of him, and we are standing behind him, looking over his shoulder at the promised land. Mm -hmm. And here we are 75 years later, still looking over his shoulder at the promised land, which is so close, but yet so far away. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like that work the most. I think that's a really exceptional painting also, the, the one which is of the back of Jinnah. And you know, you don't even need to be told that it's Jinnah. There's something immediately recognizable no face, there's a back, and I think that what Dr. Furkan has said is, is, is absolutely correct, that you do get a sense of, of sadness, actually, when you look at that work, of deep sadness, and you do feel that the artist has embodied feelings yeah. of all of us when we say the word Jinnah, when we think about the individual and we think about a dream. So I think that that uh, portrait of the back of Jinnah is something that is um, deeply moving in a way that really only artists can do, or yeah. poets, or, you know, they're the ones who speak for all of us with the words, with the images that we don't have. So that's why we give them our agency so that they do that for us Absolutely. and um, so I believe that we have to vacate the room in another four minutes but if there is somebody else who would like to say something we're very happy to um, is there anybody there yes Actually, one of the artists in the book has done exactly that. Imran Channa has dressed as yeah. Jinnah and roamed around the streets of Lahore and had himself photographed in that way. And I mean, you get kind of the feel of how people are, are um, responding to him. But part of it is also him going about as if Jinnah were alive around for regular activities and what that would look like. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes, I'm G
that's a question for the historian. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was fearing that. Um, I mean, I'm curious about the word you used, market. Um, say start studying our history uh, <laughs> uh, and the reason why I say that is because uh, you know I, I think you can you can link the impoverishment of our democracy with the impoverishment of our history I think they're very much linked and I think that uh, uh, کہ آپ کو اپنے جو آپ کے جو فاؤنڈنگ لیڈرز ان کو ایک طرح سے اجاگر کرنا ہے ایک احسن طریقے سے ان کو پیش کرنا ہے تو وہ اس کے اس کا آؤٹ کم کیا ہے وہ کس کے لیے ہو رہی ہے وہ کس مقصد کے لیے ہو رہی ہے چونکہ میرا بذات ایک ہسٹورین پرسنلی میرا انٹرسٹ یہی ہے کہ ہم اس ملک میں کیا کر رہے ہیں بطور اس کے کہ ہم ویسٹ کو کیا ایمیج پروجیکٹ کر رہے ہیں دیٹ آئی ڈونٹ ریلی کیئر مچ اباؤٹ ٹو بی ویری آنسٹ Uh, but I think that if it comes to Pakistan itself, I think that we can do a lot better by deeply investing in the study of history, um, both on a personal level and both on an institutional level. I mean, history departments, I think that اور اس تحقیق سے ڈرے نہ خوف زدہ نہ ہو چاہے اس کا you know, نتیجہ کچھ بھی ہو اور یہ بھی طے کر لیں کہ بھئی ایک قسم کی آواز یا ایک قسم کا رسپانس نہیں ہوگا جس طرح کہ ڈاکٹر صاحب کی کتاب میں واضح ہے کہ جتنے لوگ ہیں وہ جو کچھ کہنا چاہتے ہیں جو ان کے مشاہدات ہیں وہ اس حساب سے میرے خیال میں ہر ایک کے لیے ایک مختلف جنا ہے اور اس میں کوئی حرج کی بات نہیں I'm really sorry because yes. we, accept, we expected that they would have come, but apparently you see the person who's um, helping with the book, she does, is not in Pakistan right now. So somehow there was a mess up with that. Because we have done um, a talk on this book, which is on YouTube. It is yes, on there, YouTube. there is a YouTube discussion. There's a on YouTube the book. with all the images. So you can, you can look at that because we did have a discussion on that. Yep. Yes. So I'm getting a message which says, which <laughs> means that time is over. Thank you so much for being here. I'm very happy. Thank you. Both of you. And anybody wants to acquire the book, it's available here. Ah, you, uh, there's some copies right over here.